everyone and welcome back to the fourth and final episode of the 3D Daily Show. As you might expect, today is the last day of Formnex and in honor of that, we're also focusing on the end of the manufacturing process. That is to say, post-processing and quality of parts. Though maybe not the first thing that people think of when it comes to making parts, post-processing is integral to have good quality end-use parts. So let's go take a look and speak to some of our visitors about what are the options available for post-processing. Come with me. So for our first company, we're meeting with Metalies to learn a little more about their metal processing solutions. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, well for our first question, would you mind just telling us a little bit about Metalies? What do you do? Metalies is a French manufacturer founded four years ago by three friends. Uh, they brought uh, their experience and know-how from chemical and polymers industry to create innovative and ecological solution uh, for 3D printing users. Now Metalies offers different machine for processing. Uh, it's our core business. So I know that you focus on all three pillars of post-processing. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about it? Oh, uh, so your first process is uh, chemical metallization. Uh, our customer asks us to find a solution to deposit metal on their polymer parts. And first of all, we have to make the parts conductive. So after several years of research, we develop utility silver layer. It's a chemical metallization solution uh, for polymer parts. The second machine we develop more recently is to improve the condition surface of polymer parts. Uh, we call it smooth seat and it smooths and protects the plastic part uh, from 3D printed. And there was a third process as well, I think. You're right. Uh, our third solution is a cleaning process. Um, we develop one equipment uh, um, that's to be able to clean each technology uh, from 3D uh, printing uh, industry. And uh, uh, now we go even further. So we are testing a new solution to remove soluble supports and also the works in keep in touch. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. It sounds very interesting. And for our final question, could you tell us a little bit more about the importance of sustainability in post-processing for additive manufacturing? Yes. Uh, as all industrial sectors, also post-processing industry must take into this, uh, in consideration this aspect. Um, indeed, uh, we decide to develop our own chemistry and uh, we take into consideration this aspect since the design of our machine. We choose uh, some materials and some technology. They are less impact uh, on sustainability. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It was really a pleasure. Thank you for coming, Madeleine. Post-processing is more popular than ever. In a recent report from Post-Process, 76% of respondents noted its importance when it came to the quality of end-use parts. It makes sense then that out of their respondents, those who spent more than 25% of their budget exclusively on post-processing increased from 23% in 2020 to 30% in 2021. So for our next guest, we're talking to Post Process, which is one of the leaders in post-processing in the additive manufacturing industry. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, I'm Bruno Bourguet, and I lead international for post-process technologies, and uh, thanks for having me on the show. Well, for my first question, we'd like to know how the increased importance of sustainability is impacting itself post-processing for additive manufacturing. Yeah, you know, we really see this uh, trend for uh, sustainability and I think it uh, impacts additive manufacturing in many ways. First of all, as we see the scaling of AM, 
people are looking at AM for uh, manufacturing application and many of the decision makers have a high sustainability agenda. So when they look at AM, it has to be from a sustainable standpoint at par, if not better, than the traditional technologies that are being used. So this has a huge impact because as you know, this is growing. And one very good example is sustainability is also about the well-being of people. When you look at how post-printing is done today, this is actually not really good for the health of the people in many ways. Think about uh, people removing support with uh, blasters, water jet blasters. Poor people standing all day with water jet blaster removing support. We actually enable to do that in a much more automated way, which is <laughs> really removing this very bad task for the people, getting them to do much more high value jobs and overall improving sustainability. That's an example. So a little bit different. Our next question is actually, compared to Formnext in 2019, how are the visitors who are coming to your booth different? Yeah. So obviously there is a bit of an impact of uh, COVID. So there's a, a difference in the, in the geography. Uh, so we see, for instance, this year less uh, visitors from Asia. Uh, and obviously uh, we hope to see them again uh, <laughs> in the next year. Uh, but what I think is more in terms of the quality of the conversations that we have and also in the way that we believe from all the conversation we've had and we have we've had tens of meetings, uh, is that there is more interest for scaling, for manufacturing applications. So that actually leads really well into my next question, which is what do we still need to do, what steps do we need to take to work into integrating post-processing and 3D printing fully into a fully automated workflow solution? Yeah. It's, it's, it's an excellent question. And really when you look at AM, this is not a new technology and it has been really driven initially for rapid prototyping applications, small series uh, application. And, you know, you could have a approach to it, which was a siloed approach. You know, I deliver a printer and frankly, someone will find a way to finish the part, right? Uh, and, you know, you don't really need to think about an entire process flow from the design to the part in the box. Things are changing. Things are changing because now we really are moving towards uh, manufacturing application. And there you really need to think about the full process chain because it's not only manufacturing as we used to do it, it's digital manufacturing. Meaning that there's a physical process flow and integration that is required, but there's also a digital connection that is required. And a very good example of this is the announcement that we've made with ADAP. ADAP is a printer manufacturer and ADAP is sharing the same vision that we have that the ecosystem players need to start aligning not only physically so that the printer prints parts, you know, like this one, which is printed by ADAP, designed by Fraunhofer and post printed by us, but not only the physical integration must work, but the digital integration. So for instance, one of the things we're going to do with ADAP is ensuring that the printer from ADAP speak to, speaks to the post-printing unit from uh, post-process. So this integration of the process flow, this connection between the various system uh, players, the ecosystem players, is going to avoid these silos and make it much easier for the end customers to actually adopt AM. So we really see that as a very positive development. And of course, that is the most important, making it easier for everyone to use AM. Well then, thank you so much for being here today. It was lovely to meet you. Thank you very much. So as you may remember, what we are also focusing on this show are some of the most innovative startups that we've seen, especially the winners of the Formnext Startup Challenge. Today, we're here with Atlan 3D Nanosystems, who are exceptional with their, their nanotechnology and are already working with NASA. Welcome. Thank you. Well then, for our first question, could you tell us about how Atlan 3D was started? Well, we met on a conference with my co-founder, Dr. Maxim Plakotniuk. He had a really good idea. Uh, I sketched on a paper how to technically realize that idea and that's how we started. Well, you have a very unique technology. Could you tell us a bit more about it as well as the solutions you can do with it? Uh, yes, of course. So our technology works on uh, 
the background of atomic layer deposition. That's a very well-known technique in the semiconductor industry. It has been adopted by Intel and by now by almost everyone who makes uh, CPUs and chips. Uh, what we uh, managed to do is uh, we managed to have this technique work by a means of nozzle, so with microfluidics. Uh, this, this, this technique is based on chemical reaction from gases, so that's one of the things that makes us unique here, that we print using gaseous vapors and uh, microfluidic separation. And the nice thing is that this chemical technique uh, allows us to have the nano control since that is given by the chemistry. So traditionally, we always grow one third of a monolayer of molecules of the specified material. So for titanium dioxide, that would be 0.1 nanometer for pass of uh, our sample. We need the nozzle. So what about the user cases that you are seeing? Yes, yes, absolutely. I can pick one here uh, right now. Uh, this is a calibration sample that uh, was done for one of our uh, potential customers. Of course, I cannot specify who that was, so this is the leftover. And this was optical modification. So they wanted to have a little optical modifications on it. You can probably see through that there is uh, a square. And we can control that very precisely. Uh, the placement, the shape, and the thickness. And the thickness influences the optical properties. Moreover, we can do things like gradients, so we can have the squares. Uh, one of our greatest use cases is, pro use cases is prototyping, mm. uh, because traditional lithography is very time consuming. And another great use case is to do selective depositions on samples that cannot be processed by lithography. A lot of polymers cannot withstand the solvents used for lithography. Uh, polystyrene, IBS, for example, those are the two that cannot withstand the solvents used for lithography or there would need to be a very special lithographic process. Uh, then there are very simple steps such as uh, a set of little squares of thin film from 1 to 100 nanometers that is quite useful for making the devices and seeing the influence of the thickness. Uh, for lithography that would be 100 pre-process and 100 post-process steps, for us it's a single print. So that's, that's where we could excel. And final question, but where do you see Atlant 3D in the next five years? Well, I hope that in five years we'll have uh, much more uh, complex and bigger machines than our initial prototype we dragged out of our R&D lab. And I hope that a lot more people will be using uh, our technology. Well, thank you so much. That's the end of our interview with our last startup. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. And with that, we conclude the final day at Formnext 2021. I hope you enjoyed this time with us, just going through all the holes of the show to see the latest innovations and trends in the AM industry. But it's not over yet. Though the show is over, we'll still be releasing exclusive content, including videos, articles, and more, all talking about what we saw at Formnext. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure to check out the Formnext tab exclusively on the 3D Natives website. And with that, I'll say goodbye for now, and we can't wait to see you next year.